we've all heard the expression, it's better to, to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all. Mm -hmm. Somebody like Stevie Wonder was born blind. Mm -hmm. He doesn't know what it is to see. He's done amazing things with his life, but it's the only life he's ever known. In your case, is it better to have loved and lost? Is it better to have run up and down the field, be this incredible athlete, know what it is to live outside of that chair? Or do you think looking back on it, maybe I would rather have been in Stevie's condition because it would have been the only life that I've known. I believe truly it does feel good to love and I've lost. You know why? Huh. It gives you a newfound appreciation on life. And the little things that come in life, just being able to hang out with your family, being able to run a business, run a foundation with the support system that I have, being able to touch other people with just your message, just the simple little things that you can do on your own. It's just a whole new appreciation on life. And it makes you look at life when you got people complaining and doing this. And now you're like, you know how many people would wish to be in your shoes right now? You know how many people that I could talk to that wish that they were that they were just at a little bit of your life and you're complaining? It allows me to radiate that energy to other people. It's funny because when people start complaining to me and they're like, oh, I shouldn't be complaining. I, I, I don't know why. I'm like, listen, it's human nature. You haven't been through what I've been through. So you're going to have, you know, different worries in your life. But guess what? I hope after seeing me and after hearing me and being around me, you will look at your life a little bit differently and not complain maybe next time or look at it like, you know what? I shouldn't be worried about this. And that's why I say that love to loss, yes, it's tough. It's not easy to you think about where you could be or where you would have been. But where I am right now, I'm happy. I want to take a second and just talk about all of the wonderful work that you've done to bring awareness to spinal cord injuries, paralysis. Can we talk about your foundation for a second? How much money have you guys raised to date? Talk about just some of the good work that the Eric Legrand Foundation has done. Yeah, so in 2012, so many people were still attached to my story. And like, all right, what can we do to help? What can we do? The Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation. And, you know, it's funny because I ain't gonna lie to you. I didn't know who Christopher Reeve was. And my mom got mad at me that I didn't know who Christopher Reeve was. I said, Ma, I was born in 1990. I'm sorry, I didn't know. He was the original Superman in the 70s and the 80s and all that. After I did my research on him, I said, oh, I probably should have known that man. <laughs> His foundation, from the very beginning, they were alongside of me, reaching out, trying to help out. So finally, we decided in the right in January 2013, let's start our own foundation. And we called it Team Legrand of the Christopher and Dana Reed Foundation. So we became a fundraising branch off the Christopher and Dana Reed Foundation. And we launched in the fall of 2013. And let me tell you, it took off from 5K walks, Zumba tournament, Zumba competitions, cornhole, flag football, schools raising money, people just wanting to be a part of car washes. Man, I'm proud to say, galas, and, and are now coming up on eight years this fall, we've raised over $2 million for spinal cord injury research. And Hold on, stop there. How much? Over $2 million for spinal cord injury research. And we just continue to grow and continue every day. And I say to myself, spinal cord injuries, they, they don't discriminate. It can happen to anybody, any race, being in the wrong place at the wrong time. So guess what my foundation, we're going to do that. We're going we're gonna to step out of our comfort zone. We're going to educate all people on spinal cord injury research, Black, white, Latino, Asian, because I've seen them all. I've seen every type of person. Religion back on in this in wheelchairs. So guess what? We're gonna bring awareness to different things. I never knew anything about Zumba, but I had a Zumba tournament. I knew nothing about cornhole, but I had cornhole. Tournament. I had flag, I did a flag football. I know a little bit about that. Did that. 
the stuff, uh, CKO kickboxing, you know, nothing about it, but people wanting to find ways to raise awareness for, for my cause, I'm all for it because guess what? That person that's doing it may not have been educated about spinal cord injury research or anything before, but you come to a Team LeBrand event, you're going to learn, I mean, you're going to leave happy, educated, and wanting to do more. And that's why I'm so thankful for Team LeBrand. Beautiful. beautiful. I, I didn't realize that you raised that kind of money. That's amazing. That is amazing, Eric. Uh, let's talk about, as a matter of fact, even before I go to my next question, what can you tell us about the advancements made in spinal cord injury medicine? Where Are, are we going to see any major leaps in our lifetime? Is there a time that you could see just knowing where the technology is today, that maybe one day, not just the thousands and, and, and millions of people who have been affected by these types of injuries, but Eric will one day get out of that chair. Is the technology almost there? Uh, you know, I often hear about the, the, the stem cell research. Can you just speak to us about the advancements in medicine and technology? Yeah, technology, we're living in a time of technology where things are evolving every single day. You got people working on stem cell research and, you know, implanting them in the spinal cord and going through the route through therapy that way. With the reed foundation, we're going through the epidural stimulation where we're literally implanting a stem inside on the lower part of your spinal cord. And there's like, a, it's like a machine, you turn it on and people have regained back bowel function, bladder function, standing up with a walker sensation throughout their body and taking steps with a walker and st all with the stimulator on the lower part of their spinal cord. So in my life, I've been hurt for 20 years and the, I mean, for 10 years, and then 10 years from where we were 10 years ago to now, I'm like, look at the advancements. Look what's happening. People are getting up, this is working. Where will we be in 10 years, 20 years from now? And God willing, I'm still here. I truly believe I will. And I'll be able to have that day where I can rise from this chair and meet you take those steps, you know, to be a part of these studies. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.